Hi, Steve and Scott from Banner Engineering. Safety light curtains can increase the flexibility of your safety uh, system and your automated safeguarding on a machine. But when mounting safety light curtains, we have to make sure that we still allow enough space between our operator and our point of hazard to make sure that our operators still are safe in their manufacturing conditions. Steve, can you talk a little bit about some best practices when it comes to mounting our safety light curtains? Absolutely, Scott. Let's talk about things like safety distance here. How do you determine what the safety distance should be? Typically, there is a lot of uh, information out there from OSHA, from ANSI, international standards that do talk about safety distance. Safety distance is basically being able to calculate how far you are, at, at a minimum, able to set that light curtain up. I'll go through, actually, an example here using that safety distance formula. And you'll see how things do uh, gather in here as far as the formula and what these terms mean. For example, under OSHA, there is a constant as far as the speed that somebody is either reaching through a curtain or falling through a curtain. It's 63 inches per second. That's part of the formula. Next, depending on the model of the light curtain used, there's going to be a stated response time. Let's choose this one here. It's a 30, 300 millimeter light curtain, and it's going to have 11 millisecond response time. Let's plop that in there in seconds of 0 0.011. Next is the machine safe time, which is going to be how long it takes once the light curtains are breached, how long does it take for the rest of the machine to come to a stop? So that, I'm going to use 100 milliseconds here. Next is something called a DPF, or depth penetration factor. What the heck is that? DPF is where if you had been lucky enough to hit your finger right on a beam, it's going to start to shut down the light curtain immediately. But if you are actually luck unlucky enough to start going in between beams, there is that depth penetration factor formula that determines how much further you could get into the curtain before it finally shuts it down. For the 30 millimeter model we're talking about, the depth penetration factor has just been known to be three inches. Well, three inches is something that actually is derived from this formula on this chart shown here, where right at about 30 millimeters, right about here, if we bring that across, that's pretty close to three inches DPF. So that's going to complete the formula. Let's see what the total is then. The total is 10 inches for this setup right here using the DPF. Now let's uh, use something longer, one second. One second seems like it's rather quick, but once you have one second time for the machine to shut down, it really changes the overall setback distance. In this case, it's over five feet now, just from going from a tenth of a second to a second. There are other equations that you can use for safety distance. In Europe, for example, the EN ISO 13855 happens to use this formula here, uh, where again, the safety distance is the equivalent of these components here. One change that you'll notice is that the approach speed, instead of 63 inches per second, here, if the distance to the danger zone happens to be less than 0.5 meters, now the approach speed is equal to 2,000 millimeters per second. On the other hand, if the distance to the danger zone happens to be greater than 0.5 meters, then the approach speed that you use is 1,600 millimeters per second, which is equivalent to 63 inches per second. Okay. Here's just some uh, things that you can do to add a little bit of protection if you do have to be back so far. Some recognized alternatives, such as angling the light curtain, as you see here, where you're entering the light curtain, it stops it, but it also keeps track of you as you're in there making changes to the setup, and nobody can hit the reset and uh, start it up again. This is something I see a little bit more common, is where it's a L-shaped, where there's a horizontal set of light curtains to maintain the fact that you're in there, inside that machine, and you uh, can't back out uh, until you're done with that process or safety mats used for that same purpose, just to recognize that you're inside that safety zone. But otherwise, if you do have to go to that extent where you're setting it back so far, you do need to add protection to the sides so they can't reach around and get into the hazard. 
In this case, I've actually shown a laser scanner as a nice way of being able to broadcast that protection zone uh, quite a ways from the hazard. So let's talk about this. How far is the minimum setback distance from the hazard for grids? Now grids are these type of things that are going to detect your torso. They are either going to be two, three, or four beams as you see here in this slide. Uh, the safety distance is the same. Now if the distance that you can reach in by reaching over that top beam is farther than if you were to reach in between the beams, then that DPF on the end of that formula has got to be 48 inches. On the other hand, if the reach over is equivalent or less than reaching between beams, then the DPF is going to be 36 inches minimum. So in this case, there's no advantage that they can get over that top beam. So 36 inches DPF for one, 48 if you can actually reach over that light curtain and gain more access. Really, that's it. So Steve, do you have any suggestions if we were to run through those calculations of our setback distance? Any suggestions that what you can do to maybe decrease that setback distance? Because sometimes those can, and as you mentioned, can be uh, pretty significant between where you can mount a curtain and yeah. the, the uh, danger. That is for sure. That is for sure. Uh, the main emphasis should be on trying to get that machine to stop as quick as possible. And a lot of times it just might end up where you really can't use a light curtain just because of the fact that it takes so long to, for the motion to come to a stop. Sometimes those type of things may instead need some hard guarding with a lockable gate switch so you can't get access until it finally stops moving inside. So sometimes light curtains just have to be ruled out as a choice. And of course, the application engineers at Banner Engineering are only a phone call away. They can help you calculate that setback distance and you can contact us uh, either through our website or through our toll-free number. Thanks a lot, Steve. You're welcome.